Hi, today we will be dealing with problems related to trains. Train is a long vehicle. So in the calculation of distance, speed and time, the length of train also plays a very important part, right? So today we will learn how to deal with these kind of problems where train is involved because in these kind of problems, the length of the vehicle also matters, right? So the first problem we are taking is a very classic problem in which there is a train and a tunnel. So the problem is a train is 150 meter long if it travels at 15 meters per second. How long does it take for the train to pass through a tunnel that is 300 meters long? So let's forget about the statement which is given to us just for the time being and let's see what happens when we talk about a train and tunnel. So, as you can see, I have a tunnel, this is tunnel, and this is train, right? And here length of the tunnel I have assumed as L1 from here till here, right? And this length, length of the train, I have assumed as L2, right? So as you can see in this situation, in this particular point, the front end of the train is just about to enter the tunnel, right? So the time taken by train to cross the tunnel completely will start from here, will start from this very moment when the train is just about to enter the tunnel, right? So suppose the train has started entering the tunnel and it reaches till here. It is just about to start leaving the tunnel. So for that, let me draw one more picture and show you. So this is the situation which I was talking about. This was the first case in which train was just about to enter the tunnel, right? And this is the second case which takes place after that in which the front part of the train is just about to leave the tunnel, right? So, in this case, how much distance has the train traveled? Train has actually covered the distance which is equal to the length of the tunnel, L1, right? Yes, from here till here. Initially, the front end of the train was here, just about to enter, right? And now the front end of the train has reached till the last end of the tunnel, right? So in this process, the front end of the train has actually covered the distance equal to the length of the tunnel, right? So if we note down here, the distance traveled it will be equal to L1, which is the length of the tunnel, right? And here, in the first case, the distance traveled, we have to assume zero because we are asked to find the time taken by the train to cross the tunnel. So that means we have to find the time when train has just started crossing the tunnel and it has crossed completely. So there are three stages. First stage is it is just starting there the distance traveled is zero and the second case when the front end of the train has reached the last end or the second end of the tunnel, right? In that case, the distance traveled by train will be the length of the tunnel, right? And now what happens? If you see properly here, this last end of the train or you can say the whole train is actually inside the tunnel, right? Yes or no? Yes. The whole train is inside the tunnel. That means it hasn't passed the tunnel completely. It hasn't crossed the tunnel completely. Right? And for that, what the train has to do? The train has to travel some more distance. And how much distance is that? We will find out. For that, I'll draw one more picture and show you. So here we are with our third diagram in which the train has completely come out 
of the tunnel. So in this case, the front end of the train has actually traveled a distance from here till here, right? And how much is this distance? This distance is equal to the length of the train, which is L2. We have assumed the length of the train as L2 over here, right? So what is the distance traveled by the train in coming out of the tunnel completely? Here the front end of the train was aligning with the last end or the rear end of the tunnel and here the tail end of the train is aligning or has just come out of the tunnel, right? So what is the distance traveled here? The distance traveled here is actually equal to the length of the train which is L2. So if we see properly in this case, in the case of train and tunnel, if train has to cross the tunnel completely, it actually has to travel a distance which is equal to the sum of the length of the train and the tunnel both, right? Because in this case we have seen the train is actually traveling the distance equal to the length of the tunnel when the front end of the train comes till the last end of the tunnel right but to come out completely it has to travel a distance which is equal to the length of the train right because it has to take the whole length out of the tunnel then only we can say that the train is completely out of the tunnel right in order to come out of the tunnel completely it has to travel a distance which is equal to the length of the train also so the total distance traveled by train in this process is actually the sum of the length of the tunnel and the length of the train, right? Is it clear to you? So in this case, the total distance traveled by train is equal to length of the tunnel plus length of the train, right? So remember this and we will be using this in solving problem. So now let's go back to our problem again. In this statement, a train is 150 meters long. So length of the train is 150 meters and the speed is 15 meter per second, right? And we have to find how long does it take for the train to pass through a tunnel which is 300 meters long. So in this case, as we have discussed recently, the total distance covered by the train will be, yes, sum of the length of tunnel which is 300 and length of train which is 150. So this is equal to total 450 meters. And what we have to find now? We have to find time. And time is equal to distance divided by speed. Right? So distance which, which is supposed to be traveled over here is 450 meters. And speed is 15 meter per second. So 15 ones are 15, 15, 3 is a 45 and 0. So the time required will be 30 seconds. Right? Yes. So this is the solution for this problem.